In this video, we will explain everything about subject and verb agreement. Every complete sentence in the world must have a subject and a verb. Let's see how that works. Stick around. Hello everyone, this is Malik and you're watching Learnova. In this video, you're going to learn how to get the subject to get along with the verb and agree together. First of all, we're going to divide the subject of the sentence in four different categories. The first one is the pronoun I. That's what I use every time I talk about myself. So I say I, and then you continue your sentence. That's the first subject we will talk about. The second subject is going to be the pronoun you, whether you're talking to one person or a lot of people. So the singular you or the plural you. The third category is about singular subjects. Words like he, she, the girl, mom, the cat, my friend, our English teacher, the black cat, anything that is singular. The fourth category is about plural subjects, like my friends, Adam and Joan, Sarah and her mom, the boys, the animals, my father and I, anything that is plural, more than one person, place, thing, or animal. So these are all the different types of subjects. What about the verbs? We are going to divide the verbs also in four different categories. Number one is verb to be. Number two is verb to have. Number three is verb to do, and number four, all the different action verbs, the things we do like run and eat and sleep and go and come and study and write and think and all these kind of um, action verbs. We're going to get started with verb to be. In the past, if you want to use verb to be in the past, we're going to use two different words, was or were. When I talk about myself, I say I was. When my subject is the pronoun you, then the verb is always you were, you were. Well, if your subject is singular, that, this, he, she, it, the boy, the girl, the dog, the building, the car, the fish, the fox, whatever it is, as long as it is singular, we should be using was. One subject, singular subject, was. One person was, one place was, one thing was, or one animal was, that was, this was. If your subject is plural, we're going to use were. So, as you can see it in the table, I was, you were, singular subject was, plural subject were. And that's it. Verb to be in the present tense. Am is are. Every time I talk about myself, I say I am. I never say I is or I are. You, you are. The singular subject is. The boy is. The man is. The English teacher is. The beautiful fish is. My mother is. If your subject is plural, we always use are. These guys are. These animals are, these places are, or these things are, these are, or those are. Verb to be in the future is a piece of cake. There's only one option to use, will be. And we use it with everything, with all the different categories of subjects. I will be, you will be, the singular subject will be, the plural subject will be. So there's pretty much nothing to be confused about. Our second verb, verb to have. The good news here is that in the past tense, there's only one form, had. In the future tense, there's only one form, will have. That means I can use had with every subject. I had, you had, one person had, lots of people had. In the future tense, will have with all the different types of subjects. I will have, you will have, the man will have, the girls will have. So this part here is really, really easy. The only part that we need to pay attention to is verb to have in the present tense. We use have or has. 
Well, since we have two different options, then we need to pay attention to it. Every time I talk about myself, I say I have. You, you have. Singular subject, has. Plural subject, have. That means I use have with everything except singular subject. I use has, okay? It might be a little bit confusing, it might be too much information, but we're going to practice uh, how to select or to choose the correct form of the verb according to the subject, or how to get the subject and the verb to agree together. Let's talk about the third verb, verb to do. The good news also is verb to do in the past tense has only one form, did, and in the future tense has only one form, will do. So, no matter the subject that you have in a sentence, you will use only did in the past. I did, you did, they did, he did, doesn't matter. No matter what the subject is, in the future we will use will do. One person will do, lots of people will do, I will do, you will do. The only thing here, again, is the present tense. Sometimes we use do and sometimes we use does. Let's think about it. Every time you talk about yourself, you say, I do. When you talk to other people, you say, you do. Whether you're talking to one person or lots of people. You, my friend, do. You guys do. Doesn't matter. If you're talking about singular subjects, only then you're going to be using does. One person does. Yeah? One animal does. That does. This does. One girl does. And so on. If you're talking about plural subjects, you're going to be using do. So the rule here says you use do all the way, except when you're talking about a singular subject. You're going to be using does in that case. The fourth and the last type of verbs are the action verbs. Action verbs are things that happen or things that we do. We run and eat and sleep and go and come and give and take and play and, and study and write and read and, you know, we do lots of things and these are called the action verbs. Well, using the action verbs in the past is not going to be a problem because every action verb has only one form in the past. Let's try, for example, the verb write when you write. Fine. In the past I say wrote. So regardless of the subject, you're still going to be using only wrote. I wrote something. He wrote. They wrote. You wrote. It's not going to change. In the future, same thing. Just add will to the verb. So, will eat, will run, will go, will come. And it's used regardless of the subject. I will go. You will go. They will go. And one person will go. It's the same. Again, only in the present tense. Sometimes you use the verb alone, the basic form of the verb, and sometimes you add s to it. So it's either go or goes, either eat or eats, run or runs. All right, let's learn more about that. Every time I talk about myself, I do not use the s. So I say, I eat, I run, I go, I come, I love, I sleep, I do anything. When you're talking about, you know, when you're talking to other people or someone else, you say you. Whether it's the singular you or the plural you, you're still going to be using the verb without the s. You eat, you run, you come, you go, you give, you take, you see. You watch, and that's it. Only with this singular subject, you're going to be using the S. So one person eats, one animal runs. Uh, that goes, that plays. One teacher smells good, for example. Or the dog sleeps. The building opens, and so on. If your subject is plural, you're not going to be using the S. Lots of people run. Lots of animals eat. Lots of things break, and so on. Well, that's pretty much it. So, let's review. With verb to be, in the past, we are going to use either was or were. 
verb to be in the present tense, we're going to use either am or is or are. Verb to be in the future tense is not going to be a problem because there is only one form, will be. Verb to have in the past, there's only one form, had. In the future, there's only one form, will have. But in the present, we have two different forms, so we have to pay attention to that. It's either have or has. Verb to do. In the past and in the future, there are only one form in each. So, it's either did or will do with all the different types of subjects. But only with the present tense, we're going to be using either do or does. Depends on the subject. Same thing with the action verbs. In the past, there's only one form. In the future, there's only one form. But when we're talking about the present tense, you're going to be using the action verb whether with or without the S. Yes. So, this is where we need to pay attention to this subject. So, let's see how much you got out of this. Our first exercise. I'm going to tell you a subject and two different options to choose from. Let's get started. Our first subject is my dad. Should I say run or runs? Think about it. My dad is a singular subject. And the word run is an action verb, and I've learned today with, that, with this singular subject, so I'm going to add S, so my dad runs. That's right. Here's another example. My mom and I was or were. Hmm, let's think about it. My mother and I. Is that one person or more than one? It's two different people. It's my mom and I. So that's plural. In that case, I'm not going to be using was, I'm going to be using were. Yeah, that's right. Here's another type of question, which is going to be a little bit harder, okay? All right, now I'm going to tell you the verb, and I'm going to give you two different types of subjects, and you need to choose which one that gets along with the verb, which one agrees with the verb, okay? All right, let's do it. Space, place. In that space, we have two different options to choose from. The girl, Sarah and Joan. Which one? Should I say the girl or Sarah and Joan? Hmm, let's think about it. We have the word place. It's the verb with is. Well, that means the subject has to be singular in that case. So which one of these is singular? The girl or Sarah and Joan? Obviously, the girl is the right choice. So, when you take a look at the verb first, you will understand what kind of subject that should agree with that verb. Should it be a singular subject or a plural subject? And that's pretty much everything you need to know about subject and verb agreement. If you got any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell to get any future videos once released. Thank you very much. See you next video.